Hello everyone, welcome to William and the Magic Box. Today on our show, you're going to have Sasha. Sasha is from Berlin in Germany. So let's see what Sasha has to say. Enjoy the interview. So hello, Sasha, how are you? I'm fine, hello, William. How was your day today? Uh, it was okay, it was a bit um, at home. Uh, I, I was... Uh, doing some posts and uh, 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 having some phone calls. And yeah, uh, somehow I was also preparing mentally for this interview. <laughs> Amazing. So tell me where are you from, Sasha? I am originally from uh, a country that doesn't exist anymore. It was Yugoslavia. Um, and uh, now that part where I am from is called Serbia. Uh, and I lived there until I was almost 40. Uh, and then I decided uh, either I would go somewhere else and try my luck, or I'm just simply too old to do anything. And then I came to Germany. So it was some 11, 12 years ago. Wow. And uh, since then, I'm here. I was moving across Germany a bit because, yeah, the procedure for recognizing of all my degrees, being that I'm coming from outside of the EU, was a bit complicated administratively. Uh -huh. But I ended up in Berlin. Amazing. So how long have you been living in Berlin for? It's now the eighth year. Wow. 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 And tell yeah. me what's the biggest joy of living in Berlin, in your opinion? Freedom! <laughs> <laughs> so I came from a relative oppressive country, what uh, uh, in concern to gay life and everything. And uh, now I can finally be myself and enjoy wow. everything uh, in my life. And I don't have to pretend to be some... A uh, nice straight person anymore. I wasn't pretending even in Serbia. I was just uh, not uh, telling my story <laughs> completely. Amazing. It's amazing to be able to live in a country where we can express ourselves, we can be our truly self. I think it's very important for sure. Yeah, definitely. And what do you do for work, for living? Uh, currently, I'm uh, totally dedicated uh, to my online presence. Uh, so I'm on Instagram and uh, today I started also my uh, Twitter account. Uh, mm -hmm. But I was doing for over 20 years, uh, I was a forensic, I'm still a forensic pathologist, um, but I'm currently not practicing it as I needed some break from that uh, profession. So tell me a little bit more about your profession. What is it about? Uh, so the, the original one or this current one? <laughs> the, the original one that's old for 20 years. One, so I wanted uh, to be uh, a medical doctor. And then somehow during my studies, I realized, okay, maybe I wouldn't like to work with, with the patients. Like uh -huh. uh, uh, to be not to have that daily contact with so many people. And also that responsibility, I don't know how would I cope uh, to think uh, during the weekend my patient is uh, on the ward, uh, did he survive or not? Uh, so then I, uh, I have chosen forensic pathology because there the patients are mostly dead uh, <laughs> and don't talk, don't ask questions. And that was nice for a while. And then uh, I was, as I already told you, not very happy by living in Serbia. And then I supposed, okay, maybe if I change the country and I go somewhere else, I would be paid uh, for that job well, and then it would compensate. And then I came to Germany and I had this uh, hell of uh, uh, administration to get uh, acknowledged all my degrees. And then when I finally came back to work in the forensic field then i realized no this is this isn't fulfilling me anymore and uh, obviously it wasn't uh, fulfill me for a longer period of time but i 
uh, somehow thought the other things are problem and uh, not uh, that uh, that job is very nice uh, and uh, very intriguing, but not creative in a way I can have now uh, in my online presence because one can, of course, analyze the data, medical data, and make conclusions, but it is everything limited with some medical knowledge and the purpose of uh, that work. And uh, here I have really uh, an empty canvas and I can make whatever I want. Amazing. Okay, so during the interview, I'm going to explore a little bit more about your life and also about your point of views, okay? Okay, cool. So before we start our journey, within the magic box, of course, I was checking your profile and I could see that you are into feet. It's a fetish, it's a, it's a fascination, it's something about your art. So tell me a little bit about this connection with feet. Yes, well, that was uh, somehow um, when I was still searching myself and when I was young, I, of course, didn't know about food fetish or anything else. And then later it came to my mind and then uh, also my process of acknowledging the fact that I was gay wasn't that easy. Uh, and then uh, when I settled that thing down, uh, then this, this uh, with feet was a bit tricky one because not so many people are into that. And then sometimes I, I would feel bad if I asked someone about that or something. So I was uh, rather suppressing that, uh, like I was suppressing my sexuality before in general. Um, but then uh, these years I've, I'm getting older, uh, that helps a lot. Uh, and then you, at some point, you just think, okay, the life is one and it not long enough why should I waste time if I like someone's feet uh, then I can ask him so then it evolved gradually but for my personal use and then this profile when it, I opened it I just wanted to put together things I like uh, and to try uh, doing for the first time in my life something I like so I opened this profile soul seductor and then I um, I got followers, so I'm still getting them. But I was really uh, surprised by the their answers and their feedback. Uh, so it was totally interesting to me. I was aware of the fact that I have nice feet, but it is very personal thing. So uh, aesthetics, uh, what uh, I like, isn't maybe aesthetical for some other people uh, but uh, yeah the feedback is so far very good and i have uh, very interesting followers and uh, i like to get to know them better amazing very good sasha are you ready to go on a beautiful journey through your memories in life and share your point of views okay amazing welcome to ilian and the magic box so Thanks. i have here my best friend questions okay i'm just gonna play okay. a song just for us to relax before the first question all right okay cool let's, let's do, do it, it. <laughs> right yes you always can dance with me <laughs> okay cool <laughs> before we start the game during the join if it comes up a question that you don't want to talk about some reason you don't want to answer always can change okay okay first question for you is what three things are you most grateful for? Three things uh, I'm most grateful. Uh, well, uh, for my health uh, so far, then uh, for the brain I got. So I'm not the most uh, intelligent person, but uh, I, I can think and I can analyze things. And... Uh, the last thing for um, to all the friends I have, because uh, I don't have a big family myself, uh, but uh, friends are my family, so that is nice. 
And the best friends, they live in Berlin as well? Well, uh, yes, some of them live. Uh, I had luck that some of my friends back from Belgrade town uh, times moved to Berlin. So we just continued uh, our friendship on another place, which is much better. And uh, no, I like Belgrade very much. Uh, if someone is listening from Belgrade, I, I have very nice memories there. Uh, only that I have here more freedom. But yes, yeah, some of other friends moved to some other countries because obviously all of my gay friends had to move somewhere else. Uh, so it was, yeah, a bit, we are spread all around the world. All right. So let's see now that all your friends, your best friends, they are watching this interview right now. And you have a moment, an opportunity to send them a message. What would you say right now? They are watching. Okay. B, continue being that good persons and just uh, never lie. So that is my thing. <laughs> uh, just be frank. Amazing. Very good. Next question. Let's do it. Next question, Sasha. Okay, talking about best friends. Tell me what does what what does your best friends? What do they do that comforts you the most? Uh, many of them are some sort of artist, mm -hmm. so it comforts <laughs> their work is comforting, and uh, sometimes uh, I was saying that uh, I could have a fulfilled cultural program in a month just by going to my friends either uh, exhibitions or uh, shows or whatever they were performing and that would be enough for a month say when you think about your best friend what's the biggest difference between you and your best friends and the biggest similarity uh, biggest similarity that we are crazy so we wouldn't understand each other, weren't we be crazy, totally. Yeah. <laughs> and the difference? A big, biggest difference? Uh, well, we are all different people. So uh, some of them are just uh, totally different and have some reactions, which maybe I wouldn't do that their way, but that is their way and I, I'm respecting them. So, yeah. Even the differences can put us together. Amazing. Next question. Let's do it. Okay, before the next question, Sasha, tell me. Yeah, back in Yugoslavia, when you were born, I believe they speak Russia there or not? Serbia. Oh, it's a very complicated and political question. Let's say during my childhood, it was called Serbo-Croatian language. I see. And it evolved in four different languages uh -huh. and uh, to it uh, in Yugoslavia were spoken Slovenian and Macedonian language, which are similar, but still different languages. So I see. I see. Yeah. And um, so when you were living in Serbia, of course, you're, you're, you're learning Serbian. And, yes. and now for you, uh, your first language you consider is German or not? So I grew up actually bilingual because I uh, grew up at the Serbian-Hungarian border. So mm -hmm. I spoke uh, both languages, Serbian and Serbo-Croatian back in the time and Hungarian on the mother tongue level. And then uh, I learned English and German. And now I, uh, I don't consider German as my mother tongue. I uh, I, I'm fluent in it and I, I was working as a medical doctor and writing medical expertise in German. Yes, but uh, they would always hear that I'm not a German person. <laughs> okay. Next question for you is, what is your favorite TV show? Favorite TV show? Yeah, today I was reminded uh, because I opened this profile on ACT uh, and then I was reminded of the X-Files. Uh, it was my favorite show when I was like medical student, uh, and it uh, also contributed to the that I chosen I have chosen this profession mm -hmm. because I'm in Ascali. Uh, and later I had also 
like uh, six feet under. It's also <laughs> in this direction of more tourists <laughs> and bad people. Yeah, that was also one of my favorite shows. Do you do you kind of personally to watch more TV series or you prefer to watch more movies, go to the cinema? Um, I prefer both, uh, but if I'm watching movies, then I would rather go to movie cinema, movie theater. Uh -huh. uh, and uh, for series, I uh, binge watch or wherever. So I see. Any okay. Yeah. Ready for another question? Yes. Let's do this next one. Hey, Sasha from Berlin in Germany. Next question is, what's the best advice have you ever given? Best advice I have ever given to some younger people uh, not to study medicine because <laughs> medicine is perfect way to destroy your own life by helping other people to keep their lives. <laughs> that is, that why is, is that, a very... Why do you, did you get this concept? Uh, because of, um, it is, uh, of course, uh, maybe it wasn't my perfect choice, uh, but uh, somehow um, it is really a lot of study, a lot of <laughs> memorizing, and it is just not fun. Uh, to learn a phone book by heart, for instance, uh, so uh, such things. Uh, and uh, then uh, when you start working, you really have to choose well in order to have some normal working hours. Because to me, it is really important to have my weekends free, uh, to go sleeping during the night and not to work. So unless I go partying, <laughs> that's different. Uh, wow. Yes. Uh, so, uh, yes, that would be. One. Yeah, I believe when you're studying medicine, it's a career that you never stop studying. It's forever. So, it's forever. basically, in any other career, yeah. uh, one has to learn. So now, in this uh, online things I'm uh, doing currently, Okay, that is everything new for me, but things change over time. So, yeah, uh, yeah. one has to keep uh, everything together. Okay, next one. Let's do it. Before the next question, Sasha, as you just mentioned now that, uh, you know, um, study medicine and, you know, for, uh, following a career can be very difficult, can be tough because of the hours and the studies. It, it's a lot to take from you. But the opposite side, what do you find, what, when you think about what was the biggest joy for you of your profession? What did you like the most about your career? Well, uh, uh, normally as a medical doctor, I would help people to get well mm -hmm. my patients were dead so i couldn't help them directly but i i could help the justice so and that was uh, uh the role which i which i enjoyed very much to clear some uh, things which would be hidden by some bad people or wherever had some interest. So uh, I was just helping not those people who were affected by those crimes because they were mostly dead, but to the justice. And, and that was a sort of fulfillment for me all the time while I was doing that job. I see, all right. Next question is, what is the most difficult thing have you ever done? The most difficult thing I have ever done? Well, it was uh, uh, that I managed to live uh, that gay life uh, in Serbia uh, and uh, still stay authentic to myself. And I hope uh, that I stayed mentally normal <laughs> so that I overcame everything uh, and uh, that uh, I could 
continue then my life elsewhere, uh, not as the youngest person, uh, because I was almost 40 when I came here. And uh, but I'm still here and uh, thriving and uh, evolving further. I'm going to ask two questions um, in one part. Uh, one, one question, two parts. The first part of the question is, tell me when, when was the moment that you realized that you were gay, that you, you said, okay, I was born, you know, gay, I'm different, like compared with the, you know, by my surroundings. And the second part of the question is, did you have the support of your family at the time? Did you ever came out or not? For you, you just kept all in secret. Okay, so... Uh... The moment when I realized I was gay uh, was the moment when my puberty started. So I would say 13, 14. Yeah. Before that. But I didn't accept that thing. And I wanted to be normal <laughs> like all the other people. And I kept doing and trying that for the next 10 years. What wow. is a quite a long period of time, I would say now. And when I came out, uh, so it was some 24, 25. So a whole long decade after that. And even that was with actually uh, help of uh, a psychotherapist because mm -hmm. I was so strong in that will that uh, it's just a phase and uh, I will survive and then I will marry and have kids. Uh, not because I wanted kids, because the society wanted that from me. Uh, that was the answer to your first part of the question. And what was the second? Um, did you ever came out or for you? you... I got family. Yeah, uh, I came out uh, and it was an interesting story because I was doing that gradually, so not all the friends at the same time and everything. And uh, when I came uh, out to my mother, it was actually by accident and it was during the NATO bombardment of Serbia in 99. So it was wartime. I was chatting on, I think it was gay.com back then. And my mother just appeared from behind because my room had two doors <laughs> and I didn't hear, hear her entering the room. And then I just switched off the monitor and said to her, don't read this. And then somehow it needed an explanation. And it was definitely a premature uh, coming out at a very bad time. So uh, it ended that... Uh, we almost didn't talk for the first year after that. Uh -huh. And uh, I was staying at home in my hometown during the war because Belgrade was heavily bombarded each night. So I wasn't at the time in Belgrade. And uh, then when that was over, I went back to Belgrade and I really didn't uh, have a very frequent contact with my mother. And it, it lasted for almost a year. And then she obviously realized that it's going to stay that way and I'm her only child and that she would eventually lose her only child. And then uh, she started communicating with me and uh, it was everything uh, good afterwards. Uh, and she was even buying uh, bed sheets when I lived together with my boyfriend. So she was totally okay, but that... Uh, Car remained and we didn't talk much about it until one of my now ex-boyfriends, but a very nice person uh, with, um, with whom I'm still in contact. He told me, but you are so distant uh, uh, with your mother. You should talk uh, to her about that. And then on his initiative, I talked to her almost after 20 years or maybe even more after that original happening. Wow. And then we opened our souls and then uh, we said, okay, she regrets that it happened that way, but she was unprepared and, uh, yeah, surprised. And uh, she assured me that uh, she really did everything later to oh. make it better. 
and uh, so now we are okay. <laughs> oh, that's so sweet. Yeah. Yeah. Do, do you think that before on that day when she saw you on the computer, yeah, do you think she knew it? Like deep inside, she knew it that there was something about you that you know wasn't clear or wasn't um, you know you didn't know how to explain. Do you think she knew it? I think she knew it, but uh, she was like me thinking that it is something what is not going to happen <laughs> it always it's happened with the, it always happened with the neighbor with the other yeah. family yeah. next door but never happened to our into our yeah, family she even, she even had gay friends uh, so i remember now retroactively when i think some of her friends were gay now i don't know whether they talked about that or it was just like okay <laughs> Whatever. So she wasn't homophobic, never. Only that at that moment she was directly uh, against her only child, <laughs> somehow. But she made it that oh. well. What's her name? Danitsa. Danitsa. Yes. It's like the, the star, the Venus star, the, the morning star, actually. Oh, beautiful. Three questions left. Let's do it. Before the next question, tell me, did you always have this long beard? Uh, I uh, I had beard, but not this long. So uh -huh. uh, it was trimmed then, uh, when I lived in Serbia. Then when I moved to Germany, I saw here many Turkish barbers. Uh, and then I started wearing a bit, bit longer beard, but not this long. And then... A year ago, I was dating a guy who was much into these big, big beards. And then I always realized when I would come back from the barber, he was a bit disappointed. And then at some point I decided, okay, I will make him happy and I will grow a beard. And I, I was also surprised how did it look like, uh -huh. uh, because I never grew such a long beard. And I liked it very much, but then it was winter and... Uh, uh, we split it, that relationship or situationship or whatever. But my beard stayed. And then I said, okay, I will wait until the summer. Because if in summer it's too warm, then I can't have it. But then the summer came and... Okay, summer in Germany is never too hot. <laughs> uh, but somehow it isn't in, my, in the way for anything. So I'm sweating here and yeah. So I like it and uh, it survived, obviously, this summer. Sasha, when you think about yourself, when you analyze yourself, what's the biggest joy of being you? What do you like the most about being Sasha? Uh, biggest joy about being me? That I am uh, never bored. Uh, and I, uh, I like company of other people and I'm surrounded by many people, but even if I'm alone, I'm having great uh, times always. Uh, so great fun. And uh, yeah, I think that is a very substantial part of me that I, I can always find something to amuse myself. What's your star sign in astrology? Uh, Sagittarius. December? December, yeah. The end, the end of Sagittarius, uh, but I'm also in my ascendant Sagittarius, so double one. Wow. And one, my uh, friend who is uh, astrologist, astrologist, he says, oh, you are a crazy person. And I don't believe uh, much in astrology, but uh, many of my friends are also Sagittarius. My first and my my first boyfriend is Sagittarius, and my second one, I'm Scorpio, my second is Sagittarius. My oh, second okay. star sign. Yeah. And I don't know if you know, but Sagittarius, compare me with the other star signs, they have the biggest heart. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> I know that part that we hate lie, and that we are very active and like to travel, and that is totally true about me. Next question is, what gives you butterflies? What gives me butterflies? Oh, when I see a handsome guy, for instance, <laughs> that can give me butterflies. Or if I'm happy about going to some nice opera in uh, in the theater or theatric place, or if I'm 
going to travel somewhere, that kind of things, yeah. Wow. And do you see yourself living in Berlin for a long period of your life? Uh, I would like to... Uh, so I would like to keep Berlin as basis uh, for going to some other places. I could imagine, for instance, uh, to spend this winter, if it's possible and sustainable, somewhere in South America and making content, <laughs> for instance. Uh, and um, yeah, if I think here in Europe, I would like to be more in Spain when in in Italy or in any warmer country because the winters here in Berlin are really really long so it's over a half of year and uh, yeah it's somehow too cold but even when it's too cold then the best parties start and then you have a very intense party weekends uh, during the winter and then uh, somehow it, you survive it <laughs> two questions left let's do it Next question is, who was your favorite teacher and why? My favorite teacher, uh, bio biology teacher in the primary school, because she was that old fashioned uh, lady, uh, not that old fashioned that she would punish the, the pupils, uh, <laughs> but uh, like uh, she would, uh, respect us and uh, we would respect her and she would uh, know the knowledge she was uh, giving us and uh, somehow even when i think of her now it is like some very good grandmother or something like that because she was also old um, yes and uh, maybe that also uh, made me going in the direction of natural sciences because biology was my big love at the time, maybe because of Did you like school growing up, uh, Sasha? Did I like? School growing up? Yes, uh, I, I was uh, uh, that kind of pupil who was trying to be the best, uh, not to make any mistake, to have only the best notes, like a little programmed uh, uh, computer. And uh, yes, uh, later when I was... Uh, studying more and studying the, the university, then I learned to relax a bit because um, it's impossible to know everything in medicine. So it is such a big, <laughs> uh, big field that uh, you can't know everything. And then if it's impossible, then this perfectionism in myself, then it gets some reality check. And then you say, okay, it's not possible to know everything. And uh, you always wanted to to follow yeah, the the medicine career, or it was like uh, um, you know something that your your parents like kind of suggested, or your teachers, or your something about you that you it was you. No, I think it was mine, my choice because yeah. uh, growing up, I I saw that medical doctors are that smart, and everyone needs them and likes them, and somehow. I wanted to be that smart person who knows everything. And uh, I was interested, of course, uh, in natural processes and healing processes and uh, illnesses. Uh, and then I have chosen that path. Uh, even if I could have, could have chosen to play piano because I was trained and played piano for 12 years. Oh. But uh, somehow my stage fright was getting just bigger with my years. Again, because of that damn perfectionism and uh, then I uh, I just couldn't do that because of that stage fright and I have decided to ditch my talent uh, but now I, I'm singing in a queer choir here in Berlin oh, that's nice wow and once a week yeah that's amazing that's always it's so interesting how life you know introduce us again for some joys in the future in some other parts of our lives so interesting isn't it you can always go back yes yes definitely. last question ready yes let's do it how do you say last question in german letzte frage letzte, letzte frage yeah 
<laughs> Let's do it. Okay, but before the last question, I'm going to ask two questions in one. The first part of the question is, if you could choose anyone in the world to see their feet for any reason, which person that would be? You could choose anyone. And the second part of the question is, through your career as a doctor, tell me a moment or a situation that you're never going to forget, that for any reason, always going to have a special place in your heart. Okay. Uh, and the first question was, uh, whose feet I would like to see? To see or to oh. touch, or for any reason. Oh. Sean Connery is dead. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> Why him? Well, I, I was a big fan of his, uh, and uh, I was uh, even as he was alive, I was saying, "Oh, no matter the age, so I would do him." But I knew he wasn't gay, of course. <laughs> <laughs> yes, um, and the uh, second part of uh, that is actually the second question. Uh, uh, so it the. the Previous one was the penultimate. Uh, yes. Uh, what? Uh, well, I haven't seen on my uh, uh, work nice things. I haven't. Uh, but uh, uh, here in Berlin, uh, I uh, worked also in a clinical forensic pathology. So it means uh, I had living patients. And there were there was a case of a woman uh, which was raped, and uh, she's a homeless person. And uh, and we were doing that procedure and uh, gynecological uh, checking uh, and everything. And then um, uh, she asked me, uh, "How will police reach her with the results of this everything? What we were doing?" And I said, out from my perspective police will find you because police can find anyone and then she said to me but how can they find me i live in the street and then i just realized wow uh, so that is a total perspective change i i can't uh, uh, even go in her role and think like her but she she she, she showed me how much different is that than from my perspective and then uh, she was in my mind uh, the whole weekend and the whole week after that, because uh, it was just something I never saw before. Oh, wow. Yes. yes. Wow. Maybe I've not, to, not a good... bright thing to end the interview. <laughs> no, no, it's a, it's a beautiful answer. It's just genuine. And you may look, my arms full of, I'm so, I have goosebumps everywhere right now. It's so beautiful and powerful what you said. Um, and Sasha, it's sometimes we need that, that situation for us to understand the other, the other lives, other people's lives, because sometimes we keep ourselves in our lives and we don't understand and we don't see it. And sometimes it, I'm sure for you, it, it meant to happen for you because it made you think, it made you wonder, it made you understand more about yourself and about your life as well. That's beautiful. I love it. I love the answer. My God. Wow. Thanks for sharing. Thank you. Right. For... Last question is what? Ah, is... That is the last. <laughs> no, no, that was two questions before the last one. Ah, right. Okay. You're the last lying. one. <laughs> the last question is, what three things do you want to be remembered for? Uh, I will be remembered uh, uh, so in the science uh, for some articles I published. Uh, so far, <laughs> uh, so they are just basic scientific uh, articles, uh, but uh, they are published somewhere, and my name is still there. Uh, and who is reading that? He will see my name. Uh, then I think uh, for the present activity, I still don't know. But I'm doing my best, and I think that I will leave some mark somewhere in uh, fields of Instagram or Twitter or whatever, but the future will show. So yeah. we know what the future brings. And I just realized now that you left your mark here in the magic box. So people are going to watch that forever. Yes, even that. You see, I didn't realize, just realized that now, you see? <laughs> Amazing. 
It's not the end yet. Let's play now the word association game. Okay, I'm going to give away some words. Just tell one word that comes to your mind. Quick thinking. Let's start with money. Bank. <laughs> Family. Family love. Fear. Fear. Aggression. Life. Beautiful. Okay. Love. Love. Life. Okay. Religion. Oppression. Sex. Lust. Okay. Politics. Lies. Friendship. Uh, truth. Desire. Desire. Lust. Again. Okay. Regret. Regret. Sorry. Success. Happiness. One word for wish. One word for wish? Yeah. Like, uh, also what? what uh -huh, wish. Uh, help. Okay. One word for happiness. Happiness, love. One word for Yugoslavia. Paradise country that is not existing anymore. <laughs> that wasn't the one word. <laughs> That's okay. One word for Berlin. Freedom. One word for feet. Uh, sexy. Okay. And the last one now, doctor. One word. Doctor. Smart guy. Let's pretend I'm going to meet your best friend for a coffee and I'm going to ask your best friend, define Sasha in one positive word and one negative word only. What your best friend would say? Uh, he would say um, very loyal and for the best, uh, for the uh, uh, bad, the worst thing is that uh, he's damn precise and damn uh, straightforward. I see. Okay. Let's play now Sasha in the magic box and you can ask me a question. But before you ask me the question, what is your favorite German word? Oh, there are so many crazy German words. Um, Streitsholz, Schachtel, zum Beispiel. Uh, but that is a bad box. What, what means? Streitsholzschachtelchen. That is the matchbox, for instance. Ah, also, uh, uh, as also very long, this is from medical field. Uh, so the blood sedimentation, when the blood cells are settled, settling down, uh, it's called uh, Blutkörpersenkungsgeschwindigkeit. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and that is actually uh, a whole sentence describing what is happening. So the blood bodies, so the blood cells, are settling down. So wow. that is the whole, but as a one word. Yeah, Say again. Blutkörpersenkungsgeschwindigkeit. Uh, wow, wow. <laughs> okay, you can ask me a question now. Uh, yes, since when did you start uh, doing this uh, 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 magic box? And how many, do you have the track of how many interviews did you? Wow, great question. The first part of the question is, I, um, 2020, when the world went upside down, I was, before that, I was already thinking about doing something on YouTube where I could connect with people, I could express myself, but I didn't know what I could do. I was like, oh my God, what can I do? And one day, I went for a run in the park during the lockdown, and this idea came along. And I was like, oh my God, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to, um, you know, start research some questions. I'm going to write some questions, and I'm going to invite random people around the globe. So this was in 2020. I started doing interviews in June, and I launched the show in October 2020. So it's been three years and a half that I've been doing the show. And the second part of the question is, um, I, I have over a thousand people that's been on the show so far. Yeah. Wow. 
yeah, I would say a 1,300 people more or less right now. So it's been a long journey. People around the globe, people from different countries, different uh, cultures, different point of views, different, you know, uh, you know, um, sexual orientation. So you can, it's been a lot of people here on the show that I've been so fortunate to have so many people here uh, express themselves. So, so yeah, so that's the the whole story. It's of the a very market. nice, impressive number. Yeah. Thanks so much. Yes. Thank you. And it's Thank it's you. it's great to be able to connect with so many people and let people express themselves. As we said before, we just made memories right now, and that's amazing. You know what I mean? It's great. Exactly. Did you enjoy the interview? Yes, I enjoyed it very much. Thank you. I would like to take a photo or so to have something. Okay, you can. Okay, I I'm having. I'm going to post. <laughs> Thanks so much, Sash. It was amazing Thank connecting with you. Much. Thanks so much for you to be. Uh, it's amazing. I, I, oh, what I like the most about the show is, I tend not to know much about my guests before the interview because I like to get to know my guests during the interview. And I'm so Thank fascinated you. about where you come from, your your journey as a doctor. You know your passion about feet. You express yourself through, you know, the way you are. And, and I love that. That's what I like the magic box. When I'm here doing the interview, I feel like I'm in a journey because, you know, I'm, I'm walking with someone when they express themselves and sharing their story. So thanks so much for being so sweet and accept my invitation. Thank you. Thank before you very you go, much. Before you go, if you can share a positive message or anything that you live by. So my message would be uh, that people should love each other and be sincere to each other and co communicate openly. And I think uh, that would prevent many, many bad things in this world. And yeah, we, sh we should, uh, the rest of uh, humanity who is doing that should be keeping doing that uh, in hope that we will get once a critical mass and this world would be a better place, even better place for people. Beautiful. For people. Beautiful. Yeah. Thank you so much. And you keep in touch. It was a pleasure having you on the show. Okay? Take care. Have a good okay. night. Okay? You take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. So, did you like the show? Don't forget to give a like, share it, and also don't forget to subscribe to the channel. And if you'd like to be part of the show as well, first, subscribe to our channel, and after that, just go to our website, www.williamandthemagicbox.com and send us a request saying why would you like to be part of the show and I'll see you there. Bye-bye, see you next time.